welcome to the Garima Star Show. In today's episode, I have with me International Olympic Committee Refugee Athlete Scholarship holder in swimming, Ala Maso, who is a true inspiration to a lot of people out there. He left Syria in the year 2015 and finally settled in Germany in 2016. One glimpse at his respectable career, and you are left in awe of the greatness it proves. He competed at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic for the International Olympic Committee Refugee Olympic team. He proved his mettle in the men's 50 meter freestyle tournament. To those unaware, his brother Mohammad Maso too bagged the 47th position in the 2020 Olympics in men's triathlon. Thanks for joining me. Such a pleasure to have you on my show. Thank you so much. Thanks for the invitation. So in March 2016, the International Olympic Committee president Thomas Bach announced the creation of the Refugee Olympic Athletes Team as a symbol of hope for all refugees in the world in order to raise global awareness of the scale of the migrant crisis in Europe. Netflix's film The Swimmers tells the remarkable true story of two Syrian sisters who fled their war-torn home in Damascus and went on to compete in the 2016 Rio Olympic Games. So there's so much about uh you know uh the experiences and you know the determination to succeed against all odds so uh ala you have gone through so much uh and you have come out like a you know like victorious against all adversities so can you please tell us about your background have you always had the passion for swimming and what were you growing up years look like so my journey with swimming started a long time ago um almost 20 years my father started teaching me swimming as i was 3 years old so somehow swimming has always been there for me um ever since i started realizing things um i find myself at a swimming pool um uh, perhaps i spend more times at the pool than outside of it so um as i mentioned it's been there ever since i've started realizing and um my passion for swimming um always kept growing uh, the older i got um i remember with 6 years old i had my first um um club um at 9 i i started uh, racing um i also set an, a national record at 9 for the uh, for the age group i was at um um the the record is still around in syria so um I know I did I did good uh, back then. Um unfortunately the war started when I was only 11 uh, back in 2011 so um I had a long uh, break from swimming. So from the year 2011 until um mid 2015 I was almost uh, without training uh, maybe once a month sometimes twice. So there was no continuity and um the chance for you as a swimmer to to grow up um at this sport are basically those uh those early years of your career so um losing them was like um a great deal for me to to have to work with um but you know once i once i moved from syria um late 2015 and uh, came to to the netherlands first and then eventually settled in germany um i started seeing and realizing that swimming is still um around for me and maybe i do have to give it a shot um i registered myself at a club and started doing some competitions and i realized that you know part of me just want to do this and uh, in 2019 i decided to to give it all and see uh, see where it gets me um I applied for the scholarship from the IOC and um like it only took a couple of, of weeks uh, and I was in the team um you know um having the scholarship is different from being part of the refugee olympic team because first you get the the scholarship which allows you to focus more on your training uh, you know it gives you some uh, financial support it gives you the ability to train at um, the olympic centrum in my uh, in my case here in germany um you know there are some facilities that are prepared for athletes to have the best um experience they can uh, in training and in competitions so i was allowed to to train at the olympic centrum and uh, to have everything i i needed and somehow covid 
came into play and um, at the start you know when when i when i heard that the olympic games are going to be uh, postponed and uh, um, they're going to happen one year later at the start i was a little disappointed but later on i realized that it's actually uh, on my favor because i had more time of preparation and i had more time of um, of training um, before I, I received my scholarship, I used to train like 8 to 12 hours a week and then I had to go to 20 to 25 hours a week of training. So that's um, almost two or three times much uh, or two or three times more than our, what I used to do before having the scholarship. So I had to adopt and I had to adjust to this uh, new training uh, method and um, um, to this new situation, new training uh, group. A new training uh, comrades you know to to just um, yeah to just adjust to them and to the new training um, programs um, so somehow I was uh, like the whole situation was on my side and on my favor that I got more times to more time to prepare and eventually um, I was able to to adapt quickly um, uh, thanks to the coach that always uh, been there for me and to the training uh, um, friends you know that that are always that are also training with me at the group so i was able to um, to get along very quickly and um, they always helped me so i'm also thankful for all the the guys at the group and uh, to anybody who, who supported me on this journey um, later on in 2021 we had the Olympic qualification trials in Germany um, thanks to the German Swimming Federation I was allowed together with Yusra to take part at that competition and in which I also performed very well um, which pretty much gained me the ticket to Tokyo so um, ever since then it's been going well and um, I hope it's gonna stay the same way um, on the way to Paris awesome awesome so uh, Anna, please tell tell us what has been your refugee journey like. You know what were the challenges that you had to face, and how did you succeed against all odds? Well, the problems on my on my journey to 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 take refuge started since I've been in Syria. Uh, the first uh, odd that we had to go through that I wasn't allowed to fly from Syria to Turkey. Uh, likewise, my brother because I was uh, under age, under eighteen. So basically one of my parents had to come with us, which will cost even more money and um, which will take more times to, to get all the paperwork uh, done. So basically the problem started ever since we haven't left Syria yet and the problem started uh, pumping off. So um, I had to go on the, on the um, illegal way to, to Turkey. I had to enter from the north, uh, northern side of Syria to uh, to Turkey um, then I had to regroup with my brother we we you know organized that and uh, we met again met together a couple of days later um, we spent some days at a relevant house from us um, at uh, some way near Istanbul and then a couple of days later we decided to move on so we had to take the boat from uh, Turkey to uh, to Greece and um, Thankfully, our journey in the boat wasn't that bad. Um, I know a lot of people had uh, more difficulties uh, and um, their journey was uh, a lot tougher than ours. So um, for us, it was uh, it was OK. It was cold because, you know, it was October. Um, weather has been changing and uh, we just left summer to winter. So um, um, at the morning it was cold uh, at the midday it was uh, normal so um, um, we took the boat we reached to I think the island called uh, Samos uh, the island we we reached to uh, I don't remember very well um, spent a couple of days on Samos then uh, went on the normal road like crossing nine to ten countries uh, to reach um, our uh, target our target was in the Netherlands um, at the start because my father has been to the Netherlands a couple of times and he uh, he always loved, loved uh, that country um, so he decided to st or he told us to go to the Netherlands because he know it's a it's a good country um, 
while we're crossing to uh, to to the Netherlands from Germany, um, we had to settle at the German army base here in Germany. So they told us we have to give our fingerprints to uh, to control our criminal record if we have anything to do with any uh, side or any war uh, group. But um, we later discovered that they just lied on us, lied to us because it was uh, it was an azul. Azul is the um, uh, refugee as uh, asylum um, application. So uh, we somehow applied for refugee in, for refuge in Germany, even though we didn't know that that's what we done. Um, so basically, the German army told us um, you're not allowed to leave this base without uh, leaving your uh, fingerprints behind so we had no other choice uh, after a couple of months at the Netherlands we realized that uh, or the government of the Netherlands told us that um, we actually have to go back to Germany because there is a rule in the European Union called the Dublin rule and um, it says that the country you first give your fingerprints at is your host country and you have to stay there so after eight months uh, in the Netherlands, we had to go back to um, to Germany. But eventually, um, basically at the start, it was a tough one because uh, I learned the Dutch uh, language very quickly. I still can speak it, and um, I had to meet like I met a lot of friends in uh, in Holland, and uh, uh, you know at a at a point I realized I just have to leave everything behind and just move to a new country, new language, new culture. I have to adapt to, other, to all of it over again. So at the start it was very tough for me. Um, had to say goodbye to all my friends and uh, people that I knew there. But eventually life in Germany wasn't that bad and um, it wasn't quite different from the life in, in Holland and um, it wasn't very like it, it was pretty much better than I, I thought it's gonna be so um, after only a couple of weeks I had my papers done in Germany and I and I got my um, residence um, allowance and uh, everything went pretty quickly and I started visiting school again started learning German language and um, made some friends so um, eventually it all went pretty much better than I expected so I'm uh, always thankful for the for the journey you know and um, on the road from Greece to to Germany some or like to Holland some of the obstacles that faced me that I lost my brother and the group we were traveling with for uh, about four or five days and I had to cross three countries on my own I only had uh, a friend that I actually met on the way so um, we only knew each other for a couple of days and we had to travel for three countries together um, eventually meeting up with my brother again in um, on the on the borders of Austria so uh, of Austria so um, somehow um, pretty crazy journey and also very yeah. fun so um, absolutely yeah yeah, I mean, so any incident um, in your life that has changed the way of your thinking, you know, so any any kind of learnings that specifically that you would like to talk about? Um, most of my life, I've only been into sport. So uh, if any incident happened to me, it, it, sport is going to be the reason of it. And um, when I talk about sport, I have to talk about swimming. Um, which is the thing I love to do and the thing that I um, always been doing um, a lot of times you know you you go through things that's gonna change your life or that are gonna change your life and change the way you're thinking so uh, for me it was swimming that taught me that being patient is going to to uh, pay off for your hard work um, not watch not rush things and uh, always be be calm and um, if it doesn't work out this time, it's gonna work out the next time. Um, no matter how hard it's gonna be or how hard it seems to be, um, never lose faith in yourself. And um, all the experience I gathered from from you know ups and downs in swimming. So I'm I'm always learning. I'm always open to learn new stuff. And um, whatever comes in my way, I'm always ready to face it.
that's that's such a wonderful uh, you know thought process so what according to you is the right mindset one ought to have in order to succeed in a life's career or any sport and what's the message that you would like to give to our listeners well my message to to uh, or let's talk about the mindset the mindset is a is a very like has a very huge role in sport uh, in particularly and also in in swimming um go into the start block knowing that you are uh, you are better than everybody else and like you don't have to be better than everybody else to be better than them you just have to have it in your mind and uh, to to convince yourself that uh, no matter how fast the other guys are no matter how hard they work you know that you spent a lot of times in the pool as well and um, to always give yourself a credit that is a very important thing to to always um spoil yourself when you did something good when you when you reach a new goal when you reach a new time when you record a new personal best uh, always give yourself a credit enjoy what you're doing but also uh, stay focusing on on hard work that's such a fantastic message uh, ala and uh, you know absolutely to have constant faith in one's abilities and not doubt and uh, uh, you know you have worked so hard uh, during the training and to remember that you know you are you are you know going to give your best shot so that's fantastic thank you so much so let's come to the rapid fire questions these are you know short to one or two line uh, answers so mm-hmm. are you ready for that yeah, yeah? sure yeah <laughs> okay let's get it done cool cool so how do you keep yourself motivated um to be honest keeping myself motivating is always challenging you know at swimming sometimes you have to wake up very early for swimming uh, sessions um in my case i always have to wake up at 5 a.m uh, training starts at 6 so um it's always hard to leave the the, the warm bed uh, sometimes the the water in the morning is cold uh, you have to jump jump in it spend one or two hours in it maybe hard sessions So um I always try to think at the good moments um I always try to think at um you know moments I win at a competition or moments I uh, qualify for something or moments like for example the Olympics um ever since I I've been to Tokyo um the memories I I gathered there are always in my mind and uh, you know no matter what I'm thinking about no matter what I'm talking about they are always hidden at some corner of my head so i always try to think about them and uh, i always think about the will that i want to do this again and go to 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 another games and uh, have this this feeling have this experience again so this for me is pretty much the one that that gets me motivated the most uh second thing is um You know when I swim I feel the connection between me and my family because I learned swimming from my family my family has been there ever since the start um not only talking about my father the one the one who taught me swimming but also my brother is a swimmer my mom used to drive me to to competitions every time my sister was supportive also my my half siblings were all there for me at competitions time so um I always think about them like um before being at the Olympics that was the the thing that motivates me and afterwards i had two big reasons to always go after my dreams so um i have a lot of good reasons to to mo- to motivate myself wow that that's so so inspiring so what's the best advice that you've ever got um the best advice i got um it, it wasn't personal to me i've uh, there is a swimmer on instagram that i follow um a very nice egyptian guy he shares a lot of uh, a lot of his training ideas and a lot of his training methods and sometimes he gets some questions and um, and he answers them so once he he was asked this question what is the best advice that you ever heard and ever since i have it in my mind as well so he said the day that you wake up to training and um, you leave your bed and go to the pool early or late or whatever you know that you're rival has just done the same he woke up early as well he went to training as well he looked after his food as well he slept early as well he didn't uh, celebrate at the weekend he didn't go out at the weekend because he knew he had 
yeah training it the next day um the moment you realize that everything you do and every hard work and every hard session you do your rival is gonna do the same so the meaning of the advice is you always have to think or you always have to keep in mind that everything you do your rival is gonna do the same so if you want him to win you don't do the things you do because he's doing the things he's doing so um basically it's a, it's an adv it's a very long video but i always uh, thought about the first uh, couple of sentences because they they touched me very very deeply and um, always i always know when i'm when i'm going to training i know that the people i want to get faster uh, like the people i want to be faster than them i know that they are going to training as well so i i always keep in mind that i have to do it the best way i can to beat them awesome awesome i think that's that's a great advice so what's your favorite quotation any quote quote um unfortunately i'm not a good reader i i don't like okay. to to read books a lot but i uh, i listen to a lot of books um i uh, i hope one day i will be i will become a a better reader but uh, you know sometimes i just like to put my uh, headphones on and just listen to to books but um my favorite quote comes from a from a from a movie um um beside loving to to listen to books i love to watch a lot of movies um and uh, fantasy is my uh, is my uh, collection so uh it comes from uh, the movie called captain america so basically they were talking about his um his his path um after having the experiments of becoming the super soldier so the scientist that was talking about uh, that was talking to him uh, before the experiment he told him it's not about becoming the perfect soldier but it's becoming the good man so i think whatever you win in your life and whatever you achieve in your life it's not about becoming um becoming something something different but it's just about staying the same and being a good man a better man than yesterday awesome that's that's fantastic uh, who's your role model um role model for me is a very hard one because uh, you know there are plenty of great athletes out there and i know that everyone uh, every one of them re uh, deserve to be everybody's role model um my favorite athlete of all time is uh, of course cristiano ronaldo from football i been a fan since i was 8 um but being a swimmer um it's not a must but i have to choose somebody out of the swimming world and it's going to be Caleb Dressel from the USA um the american guy has been um dominating freestyle swimming since 2017 so um uh, i've saw him in Tokyo and i unfortunately didn't have the chance to approach him you know i don't like to approach athletes at the venue because i know that they are focused and they won't they won't like to be bothered um i approached one of my favorite swimmers but it was in a dining room um it was Florent Manedou from uh, from French from France um but that was a dining room uh, i never saw Caleb there so i couldn't speak to him or uh, just uh, get to know got to know him uh, Florent i got to know him uh, through Yusra Mardini because she's a good friend of him and she introduced us to each other So I hope one day I'll be able to meet uh, Caleb because I know I would love to speak to him and uh, you know maybe have a have a quote from him or just learn something new from this guy because he's just an out of this world swimmer. I know there are swimmers that achieve, that got more achievements than him but I know that he's um he's going to reach them and he's going to reach their numbers and break it so uh, I'm just looking forward for him. And um I have to give the credits for Michael Phelps because he is the greatest swimmer of all time. Um he is every swimmer's uh, big role model and every swimmer's um um hero, you know. Um just seeing how he smash every Olympic uh, games he participated at um the half a team 2000. Um, no. Yeah, that's that's amazing. I know I know that he didn't yeah. win anything at his first Olympic games, but at his second he like won everything and then in Beijing he won like nine medals or something, which is wow. crazy. Yes. He just he just made yes, it look yes. easy, you know. 
and actually everyone from the from the three guys I just mentioned makes winning look so easy but we all know that it's not that easy and we know that how much uh, work and effort they put in their uh, training so um, absolutely just yeah. have to give them totally. the credit yeah so, so what's the best thing about swimming I enjoy training I enjoy um, we call it taper so basically it's the it's the time before competition um, where you do um, short uh, sessions you do a lot of uh, sprints you do a lot of uh, fast things so that's my favorite thing about swimming um, because I enjoy uh, enjoy swimming fast and uh, trying different things and new things um, to to get me faster um, that's one of my favorite things uh, about swimming um, just swimming uh, swimming itself is a, is a great sport it gets you in a great shape um, you can lose a lot of negativity during swimming uh, you can free your mind just uh, it's just you and the water so you just have to enjoy it totally totally so what's your best swimming memory um we're gonna ex exclude the olympic games because um that's just something different you know it's uh, it's on another level you can't I don't know if you can describe favorite in a different world that, that express favorite more than the word favorite do, but uh, oh. I don't know if something something like this exists. So my favorite uh, memory happened just a couple of weeks ago. Um, we were at the competition. I qualified for the finals and then uh, the finals was an elimination race. So basically the eight guys the that qualified to the finals race like six times and every time two swimmers uh, go out and then one swimmer go out until the best two and then uh, the last one who wins like uh, the last one standing is the one that's gonna win it and uh, i was able to win it i was uh, i was having a great day um, i enjoyed winning it and uh, we had a very very full swimming pool a lot of audience a lot of swimmers that were uh, watching it and uh, the moment I touched the wall, everybody was celebrating it for me, and uh, oh, I, I never, I never felt so. Yeah, I never felt Amazing. something like this. Like uh -huh. um, I knew that the, the the girls were going right after us, but I just sat down on the lane in the swimming pool and just celebrated it with the people, and uh, <laughs> I, I really enjoyed it to the most All that's that's amazing. That's amazing. So, what's your proudest accomplishment so far? My proudest accomplishment is um, being able to balance between my private life and the sport. Um, that, is a, that is a very hard thing, you know, once you leave the pool, that you actually left the pool. Um, being with friends, being with family, being with loved ones, to not always have the, the, uh, the thoughts um, locked on the pool and locked inside of the pool. So uh, having the balance of uh, living private life and athlete life um, separated is a, is a great blessing. And uh, sometimes it doesn't go well, you know, sometimes you perform bad, so you'll be um, uh, rushing on yourself and uh, some hard. But eventually, um, if you can leave that stress behind and uh, be able to, to just um, go along with it and overcome it and um, eventually separate eventually separate these uh, two uh, different lives um, is, a, is a great blessing. And um, one of my proudest um, swimming uh, achievements is to be able to pick up my career after stopping for, far, for four and a half years. Um, that was pretty hard because, you know, swimming is a sport that needs a lot of continuity. I know every sport needs the continuity, but um, swimming is just different from all sports you know because if you have a if you have a weekly uh, training plan and you miss one day they always say it's just like if you and on the next day you go to training it's like it is your first day at the week so you actually have to train every day to keep a straight line and not break it through so um having a four and a half years break it's just like i just started my career all over if we're gonna count every day as the first day of the week from this whole uh, four and a half years so um when i when i reached germany in 2016 and i was able to pick up um and you know i started growing in swimming uh, and i started um 
realizing that it's actually worth to give it a shot. So um, that was one of my greatest uh, achievements and I'm really happy that I, I didn't give up. Uh, you know, sometimes in 2016, I always had the thoughts that I just have to stop swimming and uh, quit it. But if I took the choice, I wouldn't have been here and I wouldn't have been speaking to you, for example, and I wouldn't have been um, to all these places I've been to thanks to swimming. So, um, you know, if you have hard times, just rethink it. Take a little break if you if you need it. Listen to your body, and I'm I'm sure everybody is gonna is gonna have the best choices after a little break or a short break, um, going um, a little bit far from from the things you do, um, just to to realize: Do you really miss it, or do you really need it? You know, I I still remember the day that I talked with my brother that I I want to quit swimming, and the next day I just went to the swimming pool like I, I I couldn't keep it for one day so um, so listening to your body and and uh, having a little patient um, being a little patient is gonna is gonna improve improve you a lot not only on on your sport but also on your mind well this is fabulous I'm like truly inspired by uh, you know your attitude by by you know your story i mean actually of it's basically triumph over adversity and i'm like uh, it's it's so so amazing to have you on the show thank you so much for joining me you're very welcome so uh, thank you all for listening to today's episode with your host garma avtar see you in the next one have a great day bye